folks, I'm going to give you a demonstration on a closed environment. My name is Bev, and that's our closed environment. It may seem simple, but sometimes simplicity is the best. This jar is our world. This is the earth, this is where we live, and the plant life, and this is our atmosphere. Now, I learned on Bill Nye the Science Guy quite a few years ago something that revolutionized how I thought about our environment. Plants create oxygen, okay? If there's a forest fire or back before man came and multiplied on the planet and messed everything up, plants would survive by producing oxygen they ate carbon dioxide, pollute natural pollutants in the air, like from forest fires and whatnot, and they would give off oxygen. Okay, whatever they didn't use went up into the atmosphere. The sun shines. There we go. The sun is shining. The sun shines on the atmosphere, and it creates moisture. It evaporates the moisture from the bottom, and it comes up, and it hits the atmosphere, and it rains. Okay, that's pretty much the cycle. I'm going to try and turn this away a little bit. Now, if we introduce a bit of a fire, let's do a forest fire here. Okay, that's smoldering. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop that in there and close off the atmosphere. Okay, well, it's not completely closed, but you get the idea. This is smoke filling in the jar. The smoke and the pollutants cannot, well they can't if I close it properly, they cannot escape. So what happens is, again, you get the cycle. The sun shines, water evaporates, goes up into the atmosphere, hits the atmosphere, creates rain and comes down. Whatever the plant won't u doesn't use to create oxygen, will be gathered up by the rain, dropped down into the soil, and then the cycle starts again with the next rainfall and the next evaporation of moisture. Okay? Simple. That is a closed environment. That is where we live. My concern is that we're not paying enough attention to that. Okay? Everything that we use, everything we do, ends up in our jar. We live. We live in a jar. <sighs> if you want to kill weeds on your yard, or if you want to kill grass so that you can put a garden down, lay down tin. Lay down landscape fabric and cover it with soil. That will kill the weeds or kill the, the grass and you can plant on it. Roundup or, or any other kind of pesticide or, or not pesticide, excuse me. Well, and yeah, any kind of pesticide, herbicide, any kind of chemical that we use is going to get washed down into the soil by the next rain, evaporated up into our environment, hit our atmosphere and come down in the next rain. It never goes away. Which is my next pet peeve. Plastic. Yes, we use plastic. Plastic, we can't just get rid of it, okay? We can recycle it. That's a good thing. Recycling your plastic is a good thing. What we don't want to do is to produce any more plastic, okay? My pet peeve is with soap companies right now. All these sunlight, eco-friendly, biodegradable, uh, Tide saying, oh, we've cut it down to one-third of the size. That means less bottles, less room in the, more room in the truck for more, so it takes less gas to transport, blah, 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 yap, yap, yap. If you are truly eco-friendly, don't use plastic bottles. Use paper milk cartons. Milk does it. Plastics leach into our food. Yes, we can't get rid of it all. I stopped using plastic sandwich bags. I'm not asking everybody to throw everything out that's plastic or even to recycle everything that's plastic. If you can, great. If you can live without it, 
wonderful. My computer's made of plastic. My camera's made mostly of metal, thank goodness. What you can do, though, is make one change. One change, okay? Stop using plastic sandwich bags. Wrap your food in wax paper. Wrap your lunches, your sandwiches. I stopped wrapping lunches in plastic sandwich bags, and I stopped putting, putting 1,400 plastic sandwich bags into the landfill every year on average just by that one change. I use recycled grocery bags. Yes, they're made of recycled plastic. However, they get used over and over and over again. I thought I was doing great when I would bring home the grocery bags, the plastic grocery bags, and I would bake my bread and I would wrap my bread in them and I would, you know, divide up my meat and wrap it and put it in the freezer. I would send my husband to work with lunch, his lunch in a plastic bag. I was reusing. But they, that's only reusing once and then it ends up in the landfill. Plastic bags are one thing we do not need. Plastic containers, we don't need them. Not when it comes to soap or milk, okay? These things can be done in a paper milk cart. Write your soap company. Email your soap company. Say, I will support you. I will buy your products if you change them to paper cartons. It's one change, folks. This is the only earth we have. It will survive without us. We are the cancer and soon this earth is going to find a cure for us and we're going to be gone and it will repair itself. The earth can live without us quite happily but can we live without the earth? You think about that. This is the only place we have. There is no miracle cure. There is only one change. Think about it folks, it's so important. We really, really need to do something. This is happening, and it's happening fast. It's not climate change. It's not global warming. It's global destabilization. And when the climate destabilizes, we're, it's, we're toast. We're toast. Think about it. One change. Visit my blog, myhalfacrehomestead.blogspot.com. Get some cool ideas. Thank you.